Last year, I created a simple version of an AI basketball referee using color detection and a foam pedometer to track the number of steps someone was taking. But now, I'm taking it to the next level. The NBA, like many professional sports, often has controversial moments where referee calls can swing the outcome of games. While replacing human referees might not be entirely practical or even desired, developing an AI system to monitor and analyze games could offer a valuable solution. This AI referee system could act as a standard, allowing us to measure the accuracy of human referee calls throughout a season. With such a system implemented, the NBA could reward higher accuracy referees and punish those who don't meet the cut. Let's begin with the detection of travels. Travels occur when a player takes more than two steps without dribbling the ball, so we need to officially track the, both the ball and the player's steps. In the last iteration of the AI basketball referee, I used a color detection algorithm to pinpoint the ball's location. However, this was problematic. This required the ball to be a very specific color, and if there was any variations in lighting, it would throw off the whole system. This was impractical or efficient, so I decided to take a new approach, training a custom machine learning model to detect basketballs of different shades in any lighting. This process involves four crucial stages. Choosing a machine learning architecture, gathering a diverse data set of basketball images, labeling these images, and then training our model. I've chosen YOLO, which stands for You Only Look Once, as the architecture for a machine learning model. Picture a lively basketball game with players moving, balls flying, and fans cheering. For a computer vision system, this is just a large grid of pixel data. In the YOLO object detection system, we begin dividing this image into a grid. Each cell in this grid is tasked with identifying objects within its boundaries. Let's zoom into a cluster of cells, together containing a basketball. These cells are part of a convolutional neural network, a type of deep learning model trained on thousands of images. This network learns to recognize patterns, in this case, patterns that form from basketball players, balls, and even fans. Each cell generates bounding boxes and predicts the object it encompasses. For example, it created a probability of 90% that this is a basketball. Every cell in the grid does this process at the same time, hence the name You Only Look Once. It's incredibly efficient, scanning the image just once as opposed to multiple times, unlike other methods. Bounding boxes with low confidence scores get pruned in a process called non-maxima suppression, leaving only the most confident predictions. To gather a varied set of basketball images, I employed a Python script that scraped the top 50 images of basketballs from the internet. Then, I manually label these images using a software tool indicating the precise location of the basketball in each image. After setting up the configurations, we can start training the model, and this will take a few hours. While this basketball model is being trained, let's move to another crucial aspect of this AR referee, step counting. Previously, I used a phone pedometer for this, which had its limitations. To make your system more practical, players should not have to wear or carry anything. That's why I'll be implementing a computer vision technique known as pose estimation which can track body part coordinates. Pose estimation can detect and track key points on the body in real time. It's as if you're drawing a stick figure model on a person, tracking the positions of the joints. I've implemented a model that provides coordinates for 18 key body points and will be focusing on the ankle key points. By tracking the ankle's movement, we can effectively count steps. Testing this out and it's working pretty well. Essentially, it works by continuously tracking the current and last ankle position for both ankles and if either one has a delta greater than a set threshold, it'll be counted as a step. All right, it's time to check back on our basketball detection model. It seems to be working pretty well and it's detecting various shades of basketballs, but it seems to stumble when being faced with different lighting conditions. I think this problem arises due to the limited size of our training data set. So I found a more extensive data set with 3000 pre-labeled images, offering a greater lighting and color variation. Let's retrain this model with this new data and see how it performs. All right, this seems to be perfect. This revamped model is now accurately detecting basketballs under varying lighting conditions and angles. With our ball and player step tracking in place, we're ready to move on to the final component, dribble counting. Here, we'll track the ball's vertical movement. If the ball travels a certain distance downwards and then upwards, register this as a dribble. Let's test it out. As you can see, I have a ball. I can track the ball and
Now, let's put it all together, running the dribble and step counters at the same time. If the step count exceeds two without registering a dribble, our system will flag it as a travel. All right, on this first one, I'm not gonna take any dribbles, just three steps forward. There you go, that's a travel. On the second one, I'm dribbling and I take two steps back and a step forward, and there you go, it's a travel. Um, on this one, I'm gonna dribble around a lot and I take a gather step in two steps and that is not a travel. Um, and on this one, so I dribble the ball, take three steps forward and it is a travel. Double dribbles occur when a player is dribbling the ball, proceeds to pick up the ball, and then dribbles it again. To track the basketball, I'll be using a model that I've already trained. In order to track the double dribbles, I need to know when the player is holding the ball. To do this, I'm using the wrist key points of the pose estimation model. If either wrist of a player is within a certain distance of a basketball, within a time threshold, the system will flag the player as holding the basketball. As you can see here, I'm dribbling the ball, and then I pick it up, it's looking at the differentials between my wrists and the basketball and tracks as it's holding. Here, I pick it up with one hand, I transfer it to two hands and go to the other hand and it still has it as holding until I let go with it um, as I start dribbling. And then I pick it up with one hand again. Putting it all together now, the algorithm for double dribbling works by continuously tracking the dribble count and determining if the ball is held. If the ball is held, the dribble count must stay the same, meaning the player can pass or shoot the ball. If the dribble count is incremented by even one while the ball is being flagged as held, it'll conclude a double dribble. Alright, as you can see here, I'm dribbling a ball, and as soon as I pick it up, it's going to turn blue. And if I dribble it again after picking it up, if I don't pass it away or something, it's going to call a double dribble there. And basically what it's doing here is if it tracks that you have held the ball in your hands um, and then dribbled it again after that, uh, that means that it's a double dribble. And it works for one hand as well. So if you pick it up with one hand, dribble again, it's a double dribble. This AI basketball referee has come a long way since its first version. It has vastly improved providing consistent and accurate calls in various lightings and with different shades of basketballs. But I'm not stopping here. Version 3 is already in the works aiming to introduce multiplayer support and the ability to call shooting fouls and region fouls. This project is open source and you can find a GitHub link in the description. In the future, I may potentially even develop an app that can be used by people playing basketball in their backyard or part to have a personal referee system that they can use anytime. I would love any feedback uh, to make this thing any better and thank you for watching. Thank you.